Hi, I'm Tim. We're going to look at weirdexpressions.rs. This is a file in the Rust test suite, which is for compile like stressing the, the compiler. It is, quote, a, just a grab bag of stuff that you wouldn't actually want to, want to write. I've been aware of this file for a while. Hi, Tim here. I am going to get my mind blown with Rust, apparently. I have a file in the test. I just have to have a cry because this isn't right. Hello. unreachable call. So the call itself is actually never invoked. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. I've learned something about Rust. That does something much different than I thought it would. I thought it would actually call F and return the return, but it does not do that. Okay. So this is getting a bit weird. Okay, what? What the? I don't, don't get. <laughs> oh no, this is going to be bad. <laughs> what the? <laughs> okay, so we've got the is a function that takes a reference to a cell of bool, which has return while oh no <laughs> what it goes into the cell goes and plucks out the value it gets x which is it was sorry it gets the boolean so this is a, 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 a x get returns a boolean and so inside the while loop it then sets it to true so this is like an infinite loop However, it gets negated. So does that mean that it only it's like a, it's like a do loop? It only happens once. <laughs> okay, so that the, that's that's fine. Um, I reference to cell. Oh gosh, go away. Cell a new false okay so as we start we initialize the um so we have our new cell it's initializes false and then we create a block and then a fun a closure inside the block with where we invoke the with i then we call huh we call this closure the block is kind of masquerading there it doesn't actually seem i don't think it does anything except for helping the borrowing don't and so don't has gone through this whole thing of setting x to true but it doesn't it does it's not an infinite loop and then we assert that I get inside a tuple of one or like inside parentheses is one. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> I feel like I don't need that one's less crazy to me, except for the fact that we've got all these cells and references and stuff. Um, oh, no. <laughs> what is this? This is zombie Jesus. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Let's just, we'll breathe through it. Zombie Jesus. We loop. So this is what we expect to happen here is that this is, this is going to loop for forever while return. Now we just got stung by return. It returns immediately. But I feel like there's something else going to snatch us. 
Actually, maybe this test, maybe Zombie Jesus, which I don't know why the name is Zombie Jesus. Can someone explain that to me? Is really just testing whether or not match can be, and like all the syntax can be used. Essentially that you can use return in stupid places. Uh, so we're going looping and then while return. I, I, I want to make friends with zombie Jesus. Zombie Jesus. And I want to see if we get here. Because I don't think we ever will. Whoa! Lots of warnings. Unreachable, unreachable, unreachable. No, we don't. Aha! I was right! <laughs> yes! Finally, I did learn something that if you put would return in a really dumb place, you will get a really dumb result, uh, which is that your program will just immediately, uh, so your function will just immediately return. So all the rest of the stuff is, is is noise. It's just saying that you can put return wherever you want. You could put it inside a block. You could put it inside a uh, in, like in the context of a boolean. I find very strange as a match pattern. What is this even matching on? Is this essentially one way of saying that you could match on the never type? Because how can you match on a return? <laughs> I like this one. If you re if return, then break. Okay. <laughs> what? Not sure. I I agree. Not sure. Um. Uh. I don't get it. Not sure. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move main from the bottom to the top and then bring up do it this way. Okay. So not sure. I have an uninitialized var variable underscore x, which is on which is a signed integer. Okay. And then I assign x to zero. So if the result, so y is a boolean, a mutable boolean, that is. The comparison of the assignment, which I believe is unit. So if unit equals unit, underscore y should be true. Now z is less than, so this should be false. Underscore a is plus x as i size. Okay, cool. Yep. Plus add nothing. Right, increment by nothing, sure. It's the same as incrementing itself as nothing. So A and Y should both be true and Z or underscore Z should be false. Let underscore B swap mutable pointers to Y and Z. <laughs> Is the same as swapping mutable pointers to y and z again. What is the return value of result of swap? I'm not sure. <laughs> this is nuts. Um, I'm just going to add some things in here because I am curious. Uh, I can't even remember the macronym. Debug. Why? Underscore Z. I suppose X as well, although it's uninitialized. I kind of. Are oh, these are macros? And debug underscore B. Huh. 
Not found. Okay, so I just need to bring uh, f swap in. Okay. I'm actually going to... I want to sort of ignore those errors, but... Use standard mem swap. True, false, true, true. Now I should go back and look, look at the actual expressions. Okay, they're here on the left. Okay, so did this match what I thought it was going to do? Okay, so Y, true, false, B, true. Ah, yes, I was right. I, good job, Tim. You know Rust a little bit. He says. <laughs> okay, now we're on to can't touch this. I have got to say, I feel like, I feel like, I'm a little bit intimidated. Um, okay, so can't touch this is a function which returns an unsigned integer. And we start with a function p which we define as a function that takes no arguments, returns a boolean, and, and specifically a true value. And then we've got this bunch of asserts. So we assert that true... <laughs> we, oh my goodness. Okay, so, so this is a bit strange. We've got true inside parentheses, and then we assert true, so that's true. But we're actually testing with the equality operator the output of assert. And now we also are doing similar things with... So this is essentially testing the parser. We've got all these parentheses in the random places. Uh, so A underscore A should be true. C underscore C should be something else. So this is true. We know that, that invoking P... It's true, and that's in parentheses, then we assert is the same equals unit? That should be false, no? Why is C first instead of B? Okay, so B is a Boolean value whereby <laughs> which we get from comparing the uh, return value of print line and return zero, but we know that returning that return keyword is a bit of a trick we get. And so this is actually never invoked. Now, what I want to know if if underscore C is true or not. So I just do A and then uh, C. Underscore C is true. Okay. Why is the, how does that work? I'm going to look into this. I, I kind of feel like I really want to know why it is that comparing assert with an assert. Uh, maybe assert returns unit and so does assert returns unit on both sides. It doesn't return boolean. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Whew, whew. Angry dome. What? Loop if break. Huh? Okay, what? Break has a boolean value? What? Oh look, it gets more cursed. There's panics in here. I am just going to try something. I'm just going to... <laughs> just because I... Loop if break. I don't 
think using break in I'm surprised that that's valid rust. That's it got like I feel like something is not not right with the world, mate. That is all like yeah. Ah. <laughs> okay, this one, this looks like a less crazy, he's, match continue? How? I guess it's an, an expression based language, so everything has a value, but that seems odd. So this match never hap, I, does it panic or not? It shouldn't panic. I don't know why it's called Angry Dome. I honestly don't. But what is what I expect will happen is we break immediately. So once we once 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 the program hits this break, we pop out of the first loop and then we initialize our value i, we increment it if i equals 1, we carry on, we hit this continue and then we go to the next iteration of the loop, we increment i again, i is now 2, that doesn't and then we break. I suppose we should test that. I, I kind of do know that this this works because at the bottom of um, the file, weird expressions. And so it, we invoked it and it didn't crash. It doesn't crash. So that's that's presumably we didn't panic at what. <laughs> I. Ugh, yeah. Ah, gosh, sorry. Um, oh, tried to open the actual. <laughs> Evil Lincoln? What? Oh, no. <laughs> what? Let underscore. I don't know why this is particularly evil, but maybe that's just because I've been conditioned by some of the other weird expressions. I because you don't think of print line having a macro. Sorry, the macro is having. No, sorry, the print line macro having any output. I just want to see what happens if I just try and assign it. Lincoln. Sorry about all of this mess. I want to know why this evil Lincoln person is evil. I don't quite understand. But maybe that's not... This one looks weird. dots <laughs> I think I saw this before and thought what okay so I, I want to string from what are these dots it's the range literal what how is this one thing? What on earth is this? I'll just check if it's a use size. I hope that the compiler will say no. And go away. Ugh, I gotta get rid of all this crappy code. Aborting choose to previous error. Well, I can't find the error because expected user range two. A range two, range two, range two, range two is what is happening. <laughs> Wait a second. Can you really do this? Ah, uh, fortunately you can't. 
I should silence all those not found in Scott. Ooh, it's not. That's a that's a, an error message with an actual suggestion. Surely I can't do that. <gasps> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so this dot variable, what on earth is that? Well, the dot variable is a range two thing, so it has a left side and a right side. What I'm asking it to do is I'm just saying, please compile it, decide the type for me. It's a range two. Range two. I probably don't actually need any type aliases in there. Sorry, type hints. And apparently they're just a just a range. Ah. Oh. But what happens? If, so this is this is sort of a, a similar so this thing as saying like if I was to have this here. But how can you arrange to arrange? What's the what's the end? I'm gonna say I just want to find out. It will get a type error here. Range full. <laughs> okay, so this is the string representation of a range to, a range to, a range to, a range to all the way through to a range full right at the end. That's nuts. <laughs> but the thing on the left, that's much more nuts. What? <laughs> Actually, I think this is the one, there was a Rust conf talk about this function i'm sure of it by michael i don't remember michael's last name but i think it was rustconf 2022 and he gave a remote talk i'm just gonna i should actually learn how to do delete properly with helix um, but I still haven't figured out how to use all of Helix's actual commands. Um, yeah, my my Vim skills are well out of date. And so my Helix is even worse. There's my friend Zombie Jesus who's... I want to just select all the lines or select the rest of the thing. I'm sure that you can. I feel really bad about the fact that I'm not doing it. Ugh. Okay. There is fn u8. What on? So we need a we. It's got an argument. So let's just give it a. Let's give it an eight. <laughs> an eight. That is the type u8. <laughs> okay. So the function I I function u8 takes an argument or has a parameter u8 that is of type u8. Now if u8 the parameter is different than 0 which is of type u8 then assert equals the 8 u8 is the same as a macro defined as u8 that takes a pattern which assigns a new variable like rebinds the name u8. And in, in that case, it defines a module U8 where we have a it expose, exports a function U8 which has a the I didn't know that you could do this uh, a lifetime parameter U8 which has lifetime parameters which is is that what's this is confusing to me uh, the plus with the same lifetime? I'm not sure. This is essentially saying that the two lifetimes are bound, but 
Mm, but like parameterizing the lifetimes or interleaving them, but that's weird. And I have a the U8 function inside the U8 module has another argument U8, which takes a reference to a U8 of lifetime U8 and returns a reference of lifetime U8 to the U8. And then it has a string slice U8 and returns the variable U8, which was passed in. <laughs> <laughs> up here uh, actually there it is um, okay <laughs> so and we now invoke the u8 macro with the u8 argument from further up and assign as output a reference to u8 which is <laughs> which is created from the uh let so we rebind the u8 or reference to u8 as uh, our module our function and then a new variable 8u8 and then we call the u8 function which i think is this one recursively with zero and then we return u8, which is the original parameter, I think. <laughs> the only thing is that, wouldn't that be an infinite? Oh, right, 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 right. If it's not zero. Ah, so that's why we don't have an infinite loop. I think, he says, aspirationally. How many of these? Oh, no. Oh wow, there's heaps. <laughs> Fishy. Okay, that's a good name. The What is happening here? He says. We want to assert that the string that we, that this string here, we could break it out into different expressions. What will make it is the same as fish two. Oh boy, that's crazy. Okay, so string, what is that diamond from what? So this is like the turbo fish doesn't need a type parameter if it's being used in the context of a static method. Huh. Anyway, so the, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me, let me. Okay, so normally we would put in a, a thing, in, like a, a type hint in here. We'd say string, and then we'd give it some type parameter, i32. In this case, we don't need it. So, because we're actually talking to the, um, to like a, a, something that doesn't need a type parameter. What? It's, 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 it's just a struct. How on earth? So this one isn't so crazy, except for the fact that these also take more See, there's an actual valid reason why. See, collect, we need to provide a type hint for. But reverse and char chars, we, we don't. So that's super fishy. I can see why it's now called fish, because of the turbo fish and all the rest of it. But I'll go away. Huh. 
Huh. That's nuts. Did... How... I must have done something to delete it. <laughs> like, the, how did I... Did I... I'm just checking whether or not I added the formatting or something. Hmm. Ah, oh, my goodness. That is bizarre. I am baffled. How does this work? How is that valid? Ignore all the range two stuff. This is old news. That's 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 totally old. <laughs> what is this next one? Union. Okay. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> Okay, if fishy wasn't fishy enough, we now, let's introduce ourselves to Union. And I presume this is a test of the parser, because we have, Union is a keyword, but we're using it in a different, couple of different contexts. So first we define a function, Union, which returns nothing. Inside of it, we define a Union, which is a struct, we'll, uh, and we... Uh, well, it's is it a struct? <clears throat> it's essentially an enum without without tags, so it can be either or, and it's up to the programmer to verify which one it is. And this is why um, it's essentially only used for FFI and Rust, because C programs need this idiom, and it is pretty much inherently unsafe because the compiler can't guarantee at runtime which type you're actually referring to. Okay, so union, the union struct or the union union has a type parameter union and a field union and which takes a reference to with of lifetime union. Oh boy. Rewrite now, is this a different a different union, or is this the keyword, or is that this? Oh man, we could go and change this. I just So I was kind of right. Um, I was curious as to whether or not <clears throat> this union field actually takes a reference to a union defined internally as U thing, which is now we've now defined as U, but as previously union. Uh, I keep my my eyes are seeing it as onion. So we got out of that. Parser. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Special characters. And I'm looking at punch card below that and thinking, oh boy. <laughs> Okay, val is not whatever on earth this is. Do I unpack it? I suppose I need to. Okay, let's do the easy things first. So we've got comments at the end and there's internal comments. I'll start from the right because I'm here. This is a reference to a slice is it? What on earth is that? It's another range to... I don't really know. 
Huh? That's bonkers. We've got the at symbol, which is like the least used feature of the match seek of of Rust's match um, syntax. <laughs> It enables you to kind of like add in if statements and things, and it's just saying whatever you want. I don't care, and we'll just specif- like make it more specific by saying I don't care even even more. This is a range. This is a this is a function which has a variable called dot dot. I bet these are not actual dots i bet oh you, this font here on the left shows it so this is pro, my font doesn't uh show it but i bet that these two dots are actually a uni, unicode symbols so the highlighting is different but uh, um <laughs> that's tricky now, maybe that's what these are as well. Oh, yeah, you can see that the spacing is slightly different. Uh, okay. Huh. That's a v- so this actually is a variable, which makes it, that's something slightly less crazy. So we have a variable here, stupid dot, stupid dot, is of type tuple with two empty type parameters. And a second argument, a, I don't really understand what is happening here. I think these might be other crazy characters. So the argument, oh gosh, all of that is a closure, I think. Oh boy, I'm not having a good day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we somehow call it and test whether or not this all equals up okay fair fine fine um punch cards uh i think i actually have this one sorted uh let's see if i can expand out because i don't think um i don't think i need to go through all of them punch card so we already know that oh go away we already know that these dots are ranges and so and they implement display oh sorry debug and display um so it's saying and there's a range of all the way from left to the right left to right <clears throat> and a range implements debug and so that's fine i can, I, I can understand that this is nuts r match so the r hash says usually raw like i can it's a, it's a way to it if it's a way to use identifiers that reuse keywords so in this case we're defining a function called match but we use this prefix r hash to specify that we are sure that's what we mean and we're not in trying to define a function with a keyword val is a match inside a match and <clears throat> inside and this just looks super strange because the layout is really weird but what i think what you'll find is that if you were to format it differently it wouldn't look super bizarre because there's no nesting here but what you would actually expect to see is that this would all kind of nest this would all work and looking like a bit of a triangle because these all match on a single arm unit and they all return unit so i yield so we have a static closure whereby and we have all these yield expressions so yield kind of sends a value back 
I'm actually not very sure with how it's implemented in Rust, whether or not yield is actually yielding yield expressions or whether or not it's sort of yielding and pausing and then yielding and doing the next one and the next one and the next one. I think what is actually happening is the, um, whoa, what is that? I think what is happening is yield is going to yield all of the, the first yield is going to yield all of that. Which is probably why static is important. Mm, need to look into that in more detail. Match nested if oh. <laughs> what? <gasps> uh, okay, so we got a match here. We match on we match unit and say, do you match unit? Well, only if you <laughs> you succeed at passing this test which is i don't know what it is the compiler will be able to figure it out so if 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 true true i th i don't know <laughs> my brain is not working although i assume that basically it boils down to yes um i guess we could actually find out by running it and checking what the what this actually evaluates to presumably it's also compiled down to nothing because these are all constants so um maybe it's just if true and then it's just matches and then maybe the code optimizer says oh look i'll never hit this part so i'm always going to be true and then i'll just replace the whole match with true that would be interesting to investigate um inside the internals monkey barrel what this one i this one I'm sort of struggling with. So it's a unit. So somehow val is a unit. Our, and I think what is happening is that we know that the assignment, oh, excuse me. I think what is happening is that the space here is actually a bit of a trick. It is looking like it, it. It looks to us like it's different than the rest, but actually they're they're all the same. That if you assign unit to unit, you get unit as a result, and then we probably start, and then we collapse down, and we assign unit to unit again, and we do that again and again and again, and eventually we get to val, which is unit, which is where we started. <laughs> a function continue it's curious to me that we don't need r to define a function called continue that is kind of oh that's nasty you're returning <laughs> you're redefining loop as i32 function break what <laughs> returns loop so this returns i32 here we go and now we we assign we assign the, the the variable name return to forty two. So that's fun. <laughs> but here we are using loop as a keyword. So the Rust compiler is smart enough to distinguish a type alias being used in the context of a type. And a same identifier or the same word is being used as a control flow mechanism. It doesn't get confused. So we can do it here too with return. So return is both a keyword and a variable. Here's another thing that seems like really fun. Functions. Okay, so what's happening here? <clears throat> Inside function, we have 
struct foo. So a struct with no fields, a zero sized type. And when the deref operator is called, it returns a function which returns self. Oh dear. <laughs> so upon deref, you get a reference to a closure and the as underscore means as whatever as you know asks the compiler to do the work so it's self target now so we start with foo and then we've got the same of course we have to use the same variable name for the for the struct and <clears throat> I'm trying to work out because so it looks here like we're expanding but we don't we do terminate because we start at one and go to five but I wonder so when we dereference it we get a function out and then we call the function which it then dereferences it and we call it again. But why does it stop? Maybe just, I'm actually curious because I, well, shouldn't it be infinite? I'll need to figure that out. <laughs> this is the bathroom stall with the toilet operator. <laughs> uh, What is the matches macro? And maybe it's just testing that two matches whatever the hell this is. And if one... What? Somehow this turns to 13? I don't understand that. I'm going to need to look that up later. Closure matching. So this is the to this is apparently the toilet operator or something stupid. I think it's a terrible name. Closure matching. Okay, so X is a closure that accepts a single argument and always returns sum of one. And then I match on X and I pass in my range, which we've been using a lot, and I get sum of one out, and which actually uh sneaky we then rebind x and with the pattern matching rules we are doing we're doing it in two places so even though it's the same variable it's being used in two contexts and then we say well if it's sum of two then return sum of three otherwise it's unreachable and if we do it at call again it's sum of four so i was wrong about what's happening with this closure because it seems to be increasing and yet there's no way for it to increment what is that the range no because the range is ignored hmm We call it. Oh, it's a cl it's, what? I don't know. <laughs> See me. Oh no! Apparently, you can put as many curly braces on imports as you would like. That's useful. Info context, or oh, infinite context. We've got a module, a module, and then we can refer it all around the paths, and then we get to end of strange expressions. Okay, so we did say that I would do this in two parts. Um, I've spent nearly an hour on this, though. So let's do it quickly.
So a lot of these are quite old. So remove users of GC. That is really old Rust. So, so this is some of the old, oldest Rust that I think I've seen 12 years ago. And they used old syntax. So ret, the return keyword used to be the ret keyword. Rename. So this. Ah, uh, oh, so that's kind of unfortunate because I don't get the context of how these were all created. But this is kind of fascinating, just from the get rid of move. Hmm. I was increase the number of usages of U in the weird expressions test. So that's funny. Someone just wanted to. Go crazy. <laughs> and just add more U8s. That's perfect. Although calling it U8 is, I think, kind of cuter. So I said that, that um, that's no longer the case. And add play bot, bot dose to password. I feel like what does an expression look like that only add back thinking? I wonder what the code review process is for commits like this. Um <laughs> <laughs> like how, how does this have to go through the RFC process? I yeah, like when someone was like, you know what I want to do today? I am gonna add a punch card to weird expressions test. Does it go through a a massive thing? The commit message seems short. I wonder who else is going to add in. Um, crazy expressions. <laughs> match, 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 match. I love it. I love it so much. This is crazy. This is... Add a function returning itself. So this is quite recent. So this is, by the way, this is what happens. So they go through some tests and they just basically pulled it in right away. Make the special expression even more special. So this, I was super confused by this use of the underscores, but there's no actual explanation for what it does. So this was the, the foo one that I was also confused by. Unbox closures function traits. So that's been changed now. There's no Rust call use call. Nuts. Hmm. This wasn't as helpful as I would like. I would have really loved to have seen some like demonstration about like this is what it is. <laughs> I love Brian, so this is Brian Anderson's, like some tests for expression corner cases, mostly re revolving into some fail, don't actually work. But um, that has been my 
See, there's a great contribution to the Rust standard library, renaming a weird expression to like a much more fun name, Monkey Barrel. <laughs> I really want to know what happens with I yield. Does it return once? Oh, does it yield once? How many times does it yield? Ah. Add nested yield expression. Maybe there's some documentation in their PR from Aaron. One zero is it one one? I love that. Sure. Let's rock on. I don't know what it does. What does it do? I don't know no enough about yield. I feel like I, I should know more. Okay, with that though, <laughs> that's been my digression into the weird expressions file in the um, standard library. I bet that there are about two people who have made it all the way through. If you are one of them, I applaud you. I will see you online actually here's a plug go and uh check out the description there is a link to the discord server where we can have other fun chats and find other things that are really fun to geek out on okay cheers bye